Talks. It's Tuesday. We're doing a special episode because the 4th of July is sneaking up on all of us and it is hot and sunny and we want to make sure our kids' skin is protected as well as mom and dad, grandparents, siblings, everybody is covered. So I am here with Dr. Neiman, a dermatologist at St. Louis Children's Hospital. We are going to talk about the levels of defense against the sun to make sure our kids are okay. So I think first our brains all go to sunscreen. And as you can tell, there are a lot of options. Kind of talk us through what should we be thinking about when we grease up our kids. Yeah, so I think the first thing you mentioned, which is really important, is that it's so important to sun protect or photo protect everyone. We know that about 80% of the sun damage that occurs that leads to skin cancer occurs in the first 18 years of life. So our children are just so important and to start protecting them early and instilling really good sun protection mm -hmm. habits. I think sunscreens, we all think of this as like the cornerstone for protecting Absolutely. our children. Absolutely. And I love them, and we're going to talk about them in length. And we show. all have like a yeah. bin the with bin these in our, you know, and how old they get. And mm -hmm. we'll touch on that too. So Absolutely. I might be kind of guilty. But I think that. the most important <laughs> thing to recognize is that not all sun protective behavior is sunscreen. There's okay. also the UV avoidance or the okay. kind of other things you can do. So right here, this is just from my basement, it's this really great sun protection or UPF protection tent. You can see how small this is, yeah. how transportable it is, and you just pop it open. It's one of those ones that you just squeeze down, nice little pop it open. It's an immediate sunshade wherever you go. Because we've all done that. You're going to watch your older kid play soccer, you have the baby with you, <laughs> and like what do you do with them? And this is just yes. such a nice, transportable, easy way to bring your own shade with you. Okay. The other thing is to try to avoid peak sun hours. So we know that the sun's rays are the strongest in between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Okay. So if you're planning a pool day, maybe get there early, plan some shade over yeah. lunch, and then maybe think about going back out later after a nap time or afternoon snack and trying to avoid those really direct rays. When it's hot and sun. miserable. Exactly. <laughs> Take a break. Go inside. Yeah. Get a snack. Um, and then the other thing is the sun protective clothing or we call this UPF, which is ultraviolet protection factor in clothes. This is just so easy to do, and it's my favorite. So this is my little mams that I okay. have over here, and I started using these when my kids were just babies. So these are swim pants. Oh my gosh. I love them. I use them all the time. I don't just use them in the pool. This is like my backyard sprinkler go-to, because not only does it give them full length coverage of sunscreen on their legs, mm -hmm. or sun protection on their legs, it also protects them from like bug bites and getting irritated Got by the itchies that are out and, there. And these are, so they're like a dry fit material, mm -hmm. but they're a specialized dry fit. So, yeah. so, so not just your standard dry fit shirt isn't exactly. the same thing. It's got to be labeled as something to protect from the So sun. when they sell these, they'll be labeled with what their UPF okay. value is. Okay. You want it to be at least 30 or higher. Most often the clothing is always 50, which okay. is nice. And it's the weave of the fabric that is different. So you can see when you hold these up to light, the sun doesn't come Got through it. it, or the light doesn't come through it. And it's important to recognize that, because these are designed, as you said, to be worn in water, they're designed to be worn in hot weather, and they dry quickly. This is a white shirt example, which I think is so important, because this still has that UPF and 50 in here, based okay. on how they made the material. Whereas a standard wet white t-shirt yeah. only has an SPF of three. Okay. It is really not So just a either. normal t-shirt your kid jumps in the pool with is not going to do the it's same thing as these very specific shirts. Yeah. And then these dry so nicely. And then the other thing is getting the hats. I hats. love the bucket hat and the mm -hmm. little kids. I love the ones that you can strap on mm -hmm. so they can't rip it off. Yep. And this just gives you great protection because they're usually a little hair challenged. <laughs> and it's really hard to get all that sunscreen down onto right. their scalp and through right. the hair. So it's a great way to do it. Also, it comes down, protects their ears, their forehead, really getting that wide rim. It's harder to get the older kids to do it. So baseball hats are fine in your older kids. Yeah. But it is important to recognize that you're just getting a small shield right. on the face. Their ears are still out. Mm -hmm. Also, we have seen a lot of skin cancers in that little hole in the back of the okay. baseball hat, especially in our older gentlemen who have left hair. And got it. Like that. So knowing what you're kind of trading out. And so when we say coating your kids head to toe in sunscreen beyond these, I mean, it really is head to toe. If you've got a part in your hair, making mm -hmm. sure you're getting it in there. I mean, do we need to like massage it into our scalp? Yeah. So I think you really touched on something that I think is important, which is especially in the young girls, is when you part their hair, mm -hmm. get sunscreen, massage it down, use the lotion to get down okay. in there. And then the other thing is change the part line up. Oh, we okay, all yeah. do our hair the same. I'm a creature of habit. Yeah. But in, in the little kiddos, yeah. you know, do the part here, do it there, do that. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the summer, you're going to be getting more of an even distribution throughout their scalp. So it's not always that same area that's getting it. 
The other thing I like to do in girl hair, if you can, is sometimes do those little teeny ponies and then uh -huh. you bring them back because that'll give you nice uniform coverage. Yes. Or like a French braid is okay. another way to do it. And that. avoids not issues because who wants to comb through that hot mess? Um, I should also remind, if you guys have questions, let us know. We are here to talk through this and help your kiddos stay safe in the sun. Mm -hmm. All right, so talk through the coverage, talk through the tents. Let's talk a little bit about SPFs. What yeah. does that actually mean? So I think when you're picking so a sunscreen, there's so many things that are written on here. And so it's really important to understand how to read the label. So the first thing you want to look for is that it says broad spectrum. Okay. So broad spectrum means that it covers both UVA and UVB. So UV is the main type of ray that comes from the sun. It's ultraviolet. Okay. And that's what leads to skin damage. So UVA is often what causes premature aging. So okay. you can give it UVA for aging. Okay. And then UVB is what causes the burns and increases your risk of skin Super cancer. Helpful. So UVB for burns. And you okay. want to be blocking both of those. Okay. And then you want to look at the SPF on okay. the label. And so I usually recommend an SPF of 30 or higher. Okay. And an SPF of 30, you're blocking about 97% of UVP. Right. Okay. And then from there, it just kind of gets incrementally yeah. better. So they're actually putting a cap on how high sunscreen can label themselves. Oh, And wow. it's 60 is going to be the new cap. So you can't be saying it's 100 plus. Really? Because I think it's a lot of mismarketing that's out there. Yes. And, it's, and the higher the number it is, doesn't necessarily mean it's that much better. And it doesn't mean that it lasts longer either. Thanks. So you're paying a lot of money for not necessarily yeah. a whole lot more return. I know when my kiddos were little and they've got this like just soft, perfect yeah. little skin, never seen the light of day, mm -hmm. we were coating them in 100, thinking that that was, that was necessarily the answer, but it's not always yeah. the case. Not exactly. And then the other thing you want to look for on the label, so this one here says broad spectrum, SPF 30, is whether or not it says water resistant. <sighs> Huge. Yeah. So we have taken away the ability of companies to say waterproof. There okay. is no such thing as a waterproof sunscreen. Okay. They all do diminish and come off as you're wet and in the water. And it's just how long it's proven to kind of stand up to the water. Yeah. So some of them will say 40 minutes, and okay. some of them will say 80 minutes on them. So read it. I always recommend to families, though, if your kid's been in the water 40 minutes, 60 minutes, they're getting out, you know they're going to be sitting poolside eating a snack, just reapply. Time to reapply. Get it back on there. How early, mm -hmm. so I know I'm going to the pool, or I know we're going to soccer, or I know we're going to go do something. How long before that activity should I be applying sunscreen? So I think that's a... Because I have been guilty about wipe, 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 wipe. Okay, you just jumped in the pool. So that's, just, <laughs> that's probably not the answer. Well, I think, it's actually, no, I think it's actually the way we operate is not. Yeah. We are busy. And I feel like if I have a five-minute advance notice right. warning that anything's right. happening, I'm like really proud of myself. Right. So I think that's an important thing to think about. Well, what is in the sunscreen? And that's when you're going to look at the back under what okay. it says active ingredients here. So this one's down at the bottom. So this one says zinc oxide, actinazine, and actinosalate. So if you can't say it, it's probably a chemical blocker. Okay. If you can say it, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, it's probably the mineral or the physical okay. blocker. And a lot of the sunscreens will do a really good job of advertising, whether it's a positively mineral or whether it's a chemical blocker. Okay. And the chemical blockers on the back tell you that too, because how you apply it is different. So the physical or the mineral, which are the same sunscreens, act like the shield for the body. You put it on, it sits on top of the screen, and it is just deflecting okay. the sun's rays off. Whereas the chemical blockers like this act like a sponge. These okay. are put on the body, they're absorbed, and then they absorb the sun rays and scatter them. Okay. So the physical blockers work immediately upon application, okay. which is so nice if you're a busy mom, because yeah. you just put it on and it works and you're good to go. Whereas the chemical blockers need to be put on at least 15 to 20 minutes okay. before you go outside. It's really hard the to have The luxury that, of time. To have that advanced <laughs> notice. So I do think it's important to recognize that that, in my mind, yeah. is a major difference between the chemical and the mineral blockers. So when I think about my pantry that is full of all mm -hmm. these kind of things, does it matter? Oh, hang on. I'll get to my question. We have a question. Yes. <laughs> My daughter has sensitive skin and gets rashes easily. Yeah. Is there a sunscreen you'd recommend that would be gentle on her oh, skin? I, which is kind of mm. where I was going with this of, is there actually a difference between baby sunscreen, kids' sunscreen, or just 
general adult sunscreens. There is. There's a big difference. So for sunscreens that are labeled baby, as this one is labeled baby, mm -hmm. these are required to be just titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So okay. strictly the mineral physical markers. Oh, okay. If you have a sensitive skin child, these baby sunscreens are a very good product to use. Blue Lizard is a really nice line. I like this line a lot too for our eczema prone kids. This mm. is the Vanna Cream sunscreen. So this too is just a mineral so yeah, physical you blocker. Get rashes. And this Vanna Cream is a speci specially designed product for kids who have hyperallergenic or hypersensitive skin. And so the other thing I want to point out, which I think that you were going to mention, is to check in your bin to whether or not it's expired. Because yeah. they all have expiration dates across the top. So usually you'll check this little ribbing here, and okay. this one will tell you it expires in 2020. So December okay. 2020. In your spray sunscreens, it's usually stamped on the bottom. Okay. So this one expires in September 2021. We require the companies to have a three-year shelf life okay. when they release it. So just because you bought it last summer doesn't necessarily it's expired this summer just because mm -hmm. it's been sitting on the shelf. But always good to check that. Yeah, and they're, and they're on there and they're labeled. Because if it's not labeled when you buy it, write the date you bought it oh, on. There you go. And know. know you got about three years yeah. after it. Awesome. All right. What else have we talked about? We like keeping these kids safe. So I think something else we had talked about before was the different ways of application. So there's mm -hmm. creams. Um, I've seen like the little sticks. Yeah. And then there's the sprays. Yeah. I've been under the impression for a while that we're not supposed to use the sprays. Yeah. So the sprays... Um, are not my favorite. They are, they do have some protections in them. Mm -hmm. It's just that they're not as regulated by the FDA. So it's hard to say how much of this you really need to get good coverage. And so it's better than nothing. Okay. I know a lot of times in our active teenagers, getting them to do anything is really hard. Right. And so if you, if you need to do something, this is a yeah. fine one to use. It's also important to know how to apply it properly. So it seems like that's what I hear most exactly. about is that it's user error when yeah. we use the spray. So it's just easier, mm -hmm. better, more efficient if you're going to get the coverage you want to use the creams. But so when you apply it, when you're holding the spray, you need that nozzle right up against your skin. And you need to be able to see the shine of the sunscreen on your skin. Mm -hmm. And then after you have sprayed, you have to actually go back and rub it in. Okay, so you still have to rub yeah, it in. This not is a, not just walk through the fog, people. Yeah, it's, it's not a mist and go. Yeah. It's, a true, <laughs> it's a true application yeah. process. We don't like to mist it on the faces because these do have quite a bit of chemical and um, air solvent inhalants in okay. it. So for doing the face, I like to spray the hand and then apply to the face from there. Also important to know it is highly flammable. So do not Say apply that again. this. It's flammable. <laughs> this is flammable. <laughs> so don't do this next to the grill at the pool. Yeah. Don't do it next to the open bonfire Absolutely. or anything like that. Because you can get a real quick fire and real quick injury. Yeah. Uh, the, the creams, when you're mm -hmm. applying the creams, we'll come back to the Vanna cream here. It takes one ounce of sunscreen to okay. adequately cover an average adult-sized body. Oh, so wow. kids, kids are a little bit smaller, but yeah. you can kind of imagine how much that is. This is a two-ounce bottle of sunscreen. Oh, wow. Okay. This on my, my body yeah. or your body. If we go to the pool, we put it on before we go, and we're there over two hours, we reapply. This thing it's should gone. be gone. None of us are putting enough yeah. sunscreen on. So That's, that's an interesting way of kind of gauging how much is enough, is yeah. kind of looking at the amount of ounces in your packaging. Exactly. And so they, the same concept kind of holds true for the spray. They say it's about an ounce of the spray. So this is an eight ounce bottle. Okay. This should only last you eight applications. So if you can imagine it's you and your yeah. three children, so that's four. Yeah. I mean, if you've used this once and then reapplied yeah, once, it's, it's gone. Yeah. So okay. keep that in mind. Um, what about the sticks? I love the sticks. Okay. Uh, the sticks. I like the sticks too because they're easy to throw in your purse and mm -hmm. they're not going to explode. Yeah. Make so a mess. <laughs> I think the sticks are harder if you're trying to get like a full body coverage sure. on them because you have to do four passes back and forth for any area that you're trying to okay. I always and think of the bridge of their noses, yes. or like their foreheads real quick. You're and right around those sensitive eyes, mm -hmm. it's a great place to use them. Okay. Anywhere where you're worried about causing steam and pain, okay. the sticks are a great thing to use. This is my daughter's favorite sunscreen. I hate to like plug one. It has, <laughs> it has glitter in it. And so well, they sure sell, it does. It sells, they sell all of these different things. Um, and I know the little ones, if you can make it fun, kind of yeah. makes it more enjoyable. Also, as a parent, I send them to school with the glitter sunscreen. There and you then go. I certainly know if they have been sunscreened or not been sunscreened. There you go. Yeah, come home. You know, you have to be an advocate yeah. for your child and, and know, you know your kid best. And knowing what's best, mm -hmm. how about let's talk about skin types. So you've got very mm -hmm. fair Caucasian skin, mm -hmm. you've got darker skin. How can we help protect across the spectrums? So 
every skin is different, and mm -hmm. so everybody responds differently to the sun. And so in dermatology, when we think about skin type, we have what we call the Kitsipatrick scale. And we kind of break it down to how sensitive to the sun are you. And it's not just looking at somebody where you can judge that. It really requires asking the questions is how quickly do you burn when you're out in the sun? And can you be out in the sun all day and never burn? Or can you burn eventually? And so using that is a good judgment of your family and your parents to know. Yeah. Do you tan or does your skin color not change? Sure. And if you have the ability to tan, it means that your sun, your skin is responding to the sun rays. And there is no such thing as a healthy tan. I think that is a really big misconception. Like I'll get my base tan and yeah. then I'll be good to go for the rest of the summer. Yeah. Not the case. No, not the case. Uh, any tan is a sign that your skin cells have been stimulated to up their production of pigment, okay. which is a sign that they are experiencing harmful sun rays. Okay. So. Levels of protection across the yeah. board for adults and kids. Yes. And the other thing I want to point yeah. out is that I don't have any of the combined sunscreen, bug spray, or insect repellent products on this table. Okay. As the American Academy of Dermatology, we really recommend not doing those combined yeah. products. We had a great video recently mm -hmm. about bug bites yes. and how to manage them. So bug spray, often DEET is the best one, and now we recommend. And depending on the strength of the DEET, it changes how often do you need to reapply. Right. But often, with a strong DEET, you only need to do it once, once. and then you're good to go. Yeah. Whereas with sunscreen, you really need to be reapplying yeah. every two hours. Okay. If not more often, as we've talked about, if you're getting in and out so of water. So you can't overdo it on the sunscreen. You can't overdo it on sunscreen, but you can certainly overdo it on bug spray. Okay. And if you have too much bug spray, you can have inside side effects. Got it. So you want to be careful with those products. And we got a question. Mm -hmm. What about DIY SPF? Oh, yeah. oh, Pinterest moms. Oh gosh, I am a Pinterest mom and you see all the DIYs to do mm -hmm. all the DIY things and then they never look yeah. like it, but that's fine. But I have seen the DIY recipes for sunscreen. Please so tell I, me that's not a thing. It's not, a, it shouldn't, <laughs> it is a thing. It should not be a thing. Okay. It is not a safe thing. So the FDA regulates all of the sunscreen products make their sunscreen. It's all about what are the products that are going into it, and then what is the efficacy? So how does it work? Yeah. And what they do is they make everything to that one ounce of sunscreen is providing that adequate level of SPF. Yeah. And the do-it-yourself products online just don't work that way. You can't just take something offline and mix it with things. You think it's going to be the same. Substantial. And so they actually did a study where they looked at them, and over half of the sunscreens that are on the do-it-yourself websites provide almost no sufficient oh. UV protection. So I know as moms, we like to do things ourselves. Yes. And we trust ourselves more than we trust totally. others. And we want things to be natural and safe. So if you're really into being holistic yeah. and wanting to do a plant-based sunscreen, they exist. And you can yeah. find it. So this is a plant-based mineral sunscreen. Okay. So they're out there, they're made, they're safe, and they're tested. And they're tested. And they're tested. Yeah. Big difference. So mm -hmm. that's a great question. Um, so we do all of these things. Yeah. We coat our kids, we cover them up, we put the hats on, they still get a little rosy cheeked, or yeah. they get a nasty, you know, we missed a spot on their back, or we didn't know they took their shirt off, and their, their back gets toasty. How can we ease that pain for them? How do we get them through this? And when is the time to call the doctor? So, I think the most <laughs> important thing that I always do as a parent, I think we all do it, is what did I do wrong? Why sure. did they get sunburned? Yeah. And answering that question is often my first step when somebody's mm -hmm. sunburned. Did I not put enough on? So did sure. I not use enough? Right. Did I not do enough lead time if it was a chemical mm -hmm. blocker? Did I not reapply? Mm -hmm. And then was it expired? You kind okay. of go through all of those things in your yeah. head. Like why did they get sunburned? So you can prevent the next sunburn. Yep. Also, as you pointed out, did I miss one of those tricky areas? Mm -hmm. So the tops of the feet, I feel like they get yes. hit all the time. This little belly band uh -huh. in between the shirt. Yeah, their their top of their waistband mm -hmm. on their swim So when you're applying, right. making sure you're going in, you're getting those areas, the tops of the ears. Yep. Using the sun shirts, they make these even in like cute little tank tops for the kids. Yep. Just because you can get that high back, mm -hmm. that's a really hard area to help the shoulders. And then if they get sunburned, then you want to make them feel better. And yeah. I think the most important thing is getting them out of the sun. I think a lot of times we get a little bit sunburned and we just want to power through and we want to keep going. But you really need to stop the injury and stop the trauma okay. to the skin. So get them cool, get them inside, get them hydrated. Okay. And then you can do cool showers or cool compresses and that can really help with pain. Okay. Really. Um, we do like to moisturize the skin because we okay. know that barrier is now becoming so like aloes. aloes. Yeah, so get a nice like a nice emollient or a cream and it can have aloe vera in it. Mm -hmm. It can be a soy cream and okay. those can really feel good. 
And then if they're really inflamed and angry, you can even use a little over-the-counter hydrocortisone or okay. steroid ointment to help. And then... Yeah, so oh. when, when is the time to call the doctor if you're like, oh, is this still angry? Or how long should that burn last? So a good time to call the doctor is if your child is feeling sick at all. So if they're having fevers, chills, headaches, vomiting, yeah. you want to call and you want to get them in to see us. Okay. Uh, the other thing is if they have a significant amount of history. So like if the entire back is blistered, that would be a time to call your pediatrician and to get care. Okay. Because you'll want to talk about wound care. Just a few blisters, you don't have to bring them in. It is important to leave the blisters alone. Okay. So I think a lot of times we like to peel the tops off of the blisters, but it's almost like nature's game. You kind of want yeah. to leave it there, let it flops and cover that. Okay. okay. Yeah, no open open mm -hmm. wounds. Oh. Uh, the other thing you can do for pain and discomfort and stance, you can actually give them some ibuprofen. Okay. Um, that ibuprofen can help with inflammation and pain and help to reduce stress. Okay. So that's helpful. Super helpful. Yeah. What haven't we talked about? What have I missed? And we'll always put stuff in the comments of these mm -hmm. uh, on our Facebook page. And by all means, let us know if you have questions, and we'll do our best to help afterwards as well. Anything we've missed? No, I think that we talked about well, sunglasses. Sunglasses. They're very important. Take your eyes. It's hard to get sunglasses. Yeah, eyelids because they're always gonna cry that it's in their eyes. Yeah. And <laughs> then that's my kids' first reaction. It's in my eyes. I'm like, I haven't even done your face yet. Yeah. Like, come on, buddy. <laughs> oh, start with the face. Oh, anytime you sunscreen your kids, start with the face. I think we all see that. They get the freckles, right, in this distribution. This is the hardest area yeah. to adequately cover. It just absorbs all the sun rays. So when I sunscreen my kids, what I tell people to do is get a thick layer of that sunscreen right in there and leave it. Move oh, okay. on. Do the rest of them. Yeah. Let that thick layer really start to soak in, really start to absorb. Get yeah. the rest of them done and then come back and finish it. And that way you get a really good thick application. Start at the head, work your way down. Yeah. Thick layer, leave it in place while you're rubbing everything. Perfect. Thank you yeah. so much. This is so helpful. Yeah. Have a wonderful fourth of wonderful fourth of July, everyone. Be safe. Have so much fun. And we will see you next week on Friday. Thanks so much.